Hello again, Colin here. This is part four in the series on Domino static site generation. This one we're going to talk about uh, React client apps with client-based routing, uh, client-based rendering and, and single page applications. So client-side rendering. Uh, again, rendering is a process of generating HTML if it's done on the server or the process of modifying, mutating the DOM if it's done on the server, on the client side. So let's take a quick look at a typical React app, which is client-side rendered and client-side routed. Um, so on the right-hand side, you can see what a really simple app looks like. It's a basic app with a header component and a footer component and some body. Um, all we did was generate an app with Vite. Vite has replaced Create React app, if you're not familiar with it. It's, it's not part of the React team, but it's kind of become the de facto for client-side React apps. Okay, so we tweaked the JSX and the CSS. We created some simple header and footer components and referenced them, that's it. So nothing too magic about this app. And what's important to note here is how it works. So um, what gets served, so bottom left is in your dev project, if you're looking at it uh, through VS Code, for example, you'll note that you, on line 10, you've got a body with a pretty empty div. That's the placeholder for your whole, your whole app, div ID equals root. Um, it also references your main JSX, which is the entry point to your app. On the right-hand side, after you've done a production build, this is what it looks like. You still have on line 12 and a very empty div ID equals root, but up in the document head, you'll note that there's a JavaScript bundle, which is the built version of all your code, all your client-side code, all your React components, all your script scripts and everything gets built, merged, minified, Subsequently, if needed, you can do route splitting um, to split into smaller pieces so the initial um, payload is not too big on first page load. But baseline would be your app builds into a bundle. Now, let's take a look at what gets sent to the browser. Um, oh, oh, sorry, to be clear, what gets sent to the browser is going to have this empty div ID equals root. On the client side, DOM hydration happens. And by that, I mean the page loads, the script loads, and what the script does is rewrites the DOM. So after the DOM is hydrated, which happens on the client in this case, that's what the, the body um, has, has been rewritten to. That's how you'll see it through DevTools. So let's take a quick look at client-side rendering with a single page app. Um, very simple. Here is the index HTML that I showed you. There's div ID equals root, referencing it. So your main JSX is here. What does it do? It says document.getElementById root, which is this div right here. And it says React DOM, create element with that and render, render what? We're gonna render the app component. Okay, let's take a look at the app component. Here we go. Very simple app component, and it's importing a header and a footer. I don't even need to show you those files. You can imagine what they do. Um, they make a little header and a footer. So pretty simple app. It's a single app component with a header and a footer. Okay, so that's up and running. Let me fire it up. Here we are. Let's open up uh, DevTools right away. I don't think I was quite quick enough because I don't see a document request. Here we are. Okay, so here, here is the document request. You can see type equals document. Let's inspect that. So this is corresponding to the presentation. This is what gets sent when you do the HTTP request, the first one to the server. So if we open that up, what came back? Here's the response. What came back? We care about the body here. The body's got div ID equals root. It's empty. As I showed you in the presentation, if we go to the elements tab and expand it, it doesn't match because when that client side bundle ran, no, no longer do we have an empty div ID equals root. We've got a header, which was the output of the header component. It makes an H the custom React component called header makes an HTML header. The custom React component called footer makes an HTML footer. And here's nothing too exciting about this really simple app, but that's 
it's rewritten the DOM as one would expect. So that's the demo. And let's just talk about the process. So this is called the waterfall. Your browser makes a request to the URL you tell it to in the address bar. It first gets back the document response. And that's what I was talking about with the empty placeholder div. It's pretty empty and it's a reference to the JS bundle. It's gonna parse it, but it's gonna notice it needs a JS bundle and a CSS bundle. So it's gonna send requests for those two bundles. Subsequently, not too much longer, the web server will respond by sending those bundles back, which it has to parse and execute. Then it hydrates the DOM. That, that script bundle will hydrate the DOM. So that's client-side rendering. Client-side hydrating the DOM means rewriting the DOM. Um, so it's not generating HTML, it's actually JavaScript that's running on the client side, which rewrites the DOM to be whatever your React app decides it should be. And then once that DOM is hydrated, that may have things like image tags. So you'll see extra requests go off for any other assets that are needed, such as images and subsequently responses come back. So if we look at what an app looks like that's built for prod, still very empty index. It's got a JS bundle, CSS, images and whatnot. It's gonna have an entry point um, that gets built into the production build. And if it's a small site that you build as a client-side React app, so remember there's client-side rendering and client-side routing, two different things. We were talking about rendering. Routing is when I click a link to change between routes. It, it apparently looks like multiple pages to a user, but it may in fact be a single page app. Um, and it, in response to navigation requests, like, like click a nav link or something, all it does is rewrite the DOM because a different React component is going to render. So running Lighthouse right in the browser gives us 100, 100, 100, 100. So that's not too bad, right? Um, for a really small app, maybe that's all you need. As I mentioned in the prior part of the series, search crawlers can handle JavaScript. You're not dead in the water if your site needs JavaScript to run. Google in particular, its crawler runs a headless Chromium browser, and that headless Chromium browser will execute your script bundle. The one thing to be aware of is that over a certain size, if you've got thousands upon thousands of pages, they won't give you unlimited time to crawl your site. So if it takes too long to execute all that JavaScript in the sandbox, they may not give you that much time for your site. So you might time out and not get all your content crawled. Whereas if you did static HTML or server side rendering, there's no script to execute just to get the content. And so you're going to get further with indexing. You won't time out when they index your site. So that's it for React client-side rendering. In the next part, we're gonna talk about Next.js and an approach with static site generation and server-side rendering. Thank you.